On July 1st, 2013, I was brutally beat by Baltimore City police officers at my home with my three-year-old son, three years old at the time, in the van, um, attacked, violently thrown on my head after being handcuffed, hogtied, um, then incarcerated. The police went on to kill a man 17 days later. Two of those three officers went on to kill Tyrone West um, after the um, incident was reported, my incident was reported to Internal Affairs. They responded to the hospital. They didn't do a thorough investigation, thorough and significant investigation. Those officers were um, allowed to walk away and kill Tyrone West on July uh, 18th of 2013. My hand solidarity, Freddie Gray's family, Tyrone West family, Anthony Anderson family, and all of the victims of police brutality in Baltimore City and around the nation. What do you think it's going to take for the system to change in Baltimore? It's going to take policy change, statewide policy change, to hold police officers accountable. Baltimore United Coalition is fighting um, in cohesion to have those changes um, um, in policy held accountable. In Annapolis, we will continue to fight and for the 2016 General Legislation Assembly to hold the FOP accountable for brutal beatings and fatalities in Baltimore City and beyond. Fight the power! Fight the power! Don't be scared, stay it with your chest! Fight the power! Fight the power! Fight the power! Fight the power! This is what it's all about. We're out here for justice for our brother Freddie. We're out here for justice for the whole community that has suffered at the hands of a corrupt police department. I just looked on social media and Minister Farrakhan just tweeted and said, don't be afraid. Keep on pushing in the name of God because the God of justice is with us. It does not matter what denomination we are. But this is the family today for freedom, justice, and equality for our brother, our slain soldier, who lives on in the hearts and minds of us that are out here. We're going to walk until they talk. 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 Look at all this money. Look at all the corporations. We're going to walk until they talk. 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 You got money for downtown, but don't got money for uptown. Here's where the money is. Command tells the soldiers how they should act and what would be acceptable or not. I don't think you need to change all of the laws to change the culture. What we have is something that must change by the culture of the people that we have hired and brought on board with us. That has to happen immediately or we need to change the individuals who are part of that culture. What happened on that street was not ethical, it was not humane, let alone illegal. It was not humane to let an individual uh, suffer the way they did. It was not humane to shackle him, to handcuff him, and to throw him in the back of a van with no restraints at all. So all he could do was fly around in the van um, un unrestrained. The humanity or inhumanity of it uh, is something that has to change. We don't need those people as a part of our police force at all. It's not an isolated case. So I think overall we haven't been doing very well uh, in making sure uh, that we have a culture of uh, responsibility uh, to the citizens of the city. Turn me around, sing it with me. Turn me around, ain't going to let injustice. Turn me around. Nice. Paul Rucker. What, what do you think your role is as an as an artist in a, in a movement like this? Right now, it's to bring awareness. Uh, during my Rewind show, I talked about history a lot, and right now we're not talking enough about history in relationship to what's happening now. Today, I have an image of a lynching of 1915, and I also have Trayvon's image, and there's not much difference. I mean, if you if you look at the current issue that happened with the uh, neck injury I mean if you look at lynchings that's what happened there was a that was a neck injury they, that's how they died the neck was broken so uh, just showing how history repeats over and over again and how people are able to commit murder over and over again without actually being prosecuted for those murders anytime there's a shooting officers should 
be immediately tested for steroids. They should be immediately tested for drugs of all kinds. They should be immediately questioned. They, right now, there's a waiting period for cops to be questioned, and that needs to be taken into account. I mean, none of us would have a waiting period to be questioned. Why do cops get a waiting period? Same thing that happened in Ferguson. He, uh, Darren Wilson wasn't questioned immediately. And there needs to be more talk about uh, affiliation with uh, hate organizations like the Klan. How many uh, police officers are affiliated with the Klan? And uh, we need to ask those questions during a polygraph test when policemen are being interviewed. It's very important. And we are in a police state, and, and we should be able to walk around without being stopped, without cause. And uh, right now, the, the trumped up charge they're trying to say for uh, this incident is weapons charges. He had a pocket knife. We really need to look at how the laws are executed. We need to look at the disparity in prosecution, and we need to look at the selective enforcement of those laws. I'm a Baltimore City resident, and I'm deeply disturbed by the activities that has been uh, going on, the victimization of Baltimore City people, mostly young black men by the Baltimore City Police Department. And you got busted the other day, right? For taking pictures, yeah. I, I, I've heard 10 different reasons why it happened, but the fact that I was charged with nothing means it was nothing. It, there was frustration on the end of the police. I was an easy target. They wanted to snatch someone. There I was, myself and another photographer. We literally were the first arrest since this whole demonstration started to go down. For what? For standing there taking pictures. So many of us have been working so long, long before this incident, trying to bring about change. And sometimes it's frustrating. We've seen what appears to be very little progress. We saw all the bills for reform in the state legislature this year basically collapsed and they didn't go anywhere. That's one place to start, but another place to start is exactly what you see here. More and more people say, you know what, wait a minute, I do give a damn about this. This does affect all of us. Maybe I haven't gotten beat down, but enough people have. And when the people want it, you know, sometimes change really does start from the bottom up. No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! What do we want? Justice! justice. What do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! Cordy, last name Shaw. And you live over here? Born and raised, that's all I know. I've traveled a lot. I'm tired of us, tired of them killing us. You hear me? You all right, baby? Excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, I, I got something to say. If I kill them, bitches, them no. bitches that sit up there and get mad if some fucking body will kill one of their kids. We know where the fuck y'all live at, too. Kiss ass. <laughs> yeah, what do you think about this situation? This situation, well, you mean, we don't mind that. That's just because how she fell off our feelings. But that's all we basically trying to do is, you know I mean, that's all we trying to do is get everybody together, get everybody on a piece for this black young brother that lost his life for nothing. Like, for nothing. Because, you know I mean, I've been, I, I have done some wrong before and I have been locked up and I know, yeah, the paddy wagon rough, but the paddy wagon don't kill you. And everybody know that. So it's more to that story. And we all know that. So we're going to find out. And if we don't find out, these young black brothers out here, it's going to get real. I'm telling you. I'm a Black Panther, and I'm serious about mine. Black power! You want to say anything? <laughs>